Welcome to the Songster Series. I'm your host, Brooks Long. Welcome to Creative Alliance. Uh, way back now in, I believe, May of 2017, our first guest here was uh, Warner Williams. And Warner Williams is known as the last living songster. Um, Warner Williams can just go. He, he can go from your cheating heart to... Uh, Blueberry Hill to bring it on home to me to uh, if I asked him to play David Boy, I bet he would know. I believe that we've got songsters all around us. And if you just, you know, listen a little harder, you'll be able to find uh, a wide, wide range of influences that uh, just aren't apparent unless you are really paying attention to the individual. We have some strong individual uh, Baltimore musicians here, and our guest, Marion, is not from Baltimore, uh -uh. Um, but, uh, but we're happy to have her here. She is uh, one of my favorite on the scene. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we should start there. Where are you from? I'm from Virginia. I grew up in uh, outside of D.C. And then about 10 years ago, moved to D.C. And then five years ago, moved to Baltimore. First, uh, before we go all the way back, I want to ask you about that song that you just played. What's sure. it called? That song is called Cypress, after a cypress tree. Okay. What album is that on? That's an original, right? Yeah, it's uh, an original song from my most recent album, mm -hmm. Lake Akatink, which is... Which you can pick up tonight. Mm -hmm. Wonderful album. Oh, yeah. Um, I also just put two versions of that song on a tape. Um, 
Yeah, when I was recording Cyprus, you, you heard it solo tonight, but there's a version with th saxophones and drums, and then there's a version with um, a wind trio, flute, bassoon, and clarinet. Um, so it's a song about natural cycles and impermanence. I wrote it um, when I was in the hill country of Texas, uh, walking along this creek, seeing cypress trees and thinking about drought and natural cycles. You dig that. Um, musically, um, just just uh, that performance that you just did is, is really good, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, finger picking that you've got going on there, yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. Wonderful guitar playing. So, mm -hmm. uh, you first started playing the guitar uh, when? Um, probably when I was thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So over half my life now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's been like a it's been a slow burning journey though. Yeah. I would say. Well. Um, yeah, nobody nobody starts out playing like that, but yeah. but it, it seems yeah. like it seems like you got there. So you were mm -hmm. you were taking lessons in school in your mm -hmm. uh, in your middle school. Um, I'm sorry, in your high school. Yeah, well, it started. Um, yeah, so my high school had a guitar class, which as an elective, and I took it every year, and it was. Um, really wonderful environment like just very ideal for me because uh i'm not a competitive person at all and um it was more so like what do you want to do as a student versus this is what you should be doing um which i think is really cool to be able to like give students that kind of space because often there's like we have we have to do this kind of thing so it was a very positive and warm environment to be a part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Key was teaching you? Yeah. Yeah? M Mr. Key was um, the guitar teacher at Annandale High School. Uh, holds a special place in my heart. Um, he, I think he, he was first instrument was probably drums, but um, he taught the guitar class and... Yeah, um, he's he's the kind of teacher that like really paid attention to like what students were listening to or into, and he would pick up on like subtle things. Like, um, so <laughs> one of the first days of high school, I, I would draw and write s things on my hands all the time. That's what you just do at that age. Yeah. And um, <laughs> like one day I had like all these roses that I did with like a Sharpie marker. I would never write Sharpie on my skin again. I guess if I'm going to a show, they give you the X. But um, yeah. Um, but one day I wrote, um, it was the first week of school, I wrote The World is a Vampire <laughs> on my hand from uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Bullet with Butterfly Wings. And Mr. Key like didn't miss a beat and just like hand, handed me a Xerox copy of Bullet with Butterfly Wings tab. I was like, you should, you should learn this. And I was like, whoa, you're really cool. So yeah. And um, he would also have like weekly listening days where he would like create like VHS compilations of like people performing on like late night TV shows or oh, that's things cool. like that. So yeah, um, it was great. And then there was like the annual guitar club concert too. So yeah, I loved it. It was like really dreamy to have that. So, um, so smashing pumpkins. <laughs> yeah. Smashing yeah. pumpkins. Um, <laughs> how'd you get? How'd you get there? You were were you listening to the radio? Uh, maybe with your sister, or maybe just <laughs> yeah. By yourself? Um, yeah, I think my sister still has a Smashing Pumpkins poster in her room. <laughs> Last time I checked. Um, yeah, that was actually one of the first music videos I remember seeing as a kid was like the Tonight music video. Oh, yeah. I, I still very much love that song. Um, I remember getting, she got that album at some point and it was like, you know, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. It was just like this really chunky album. It's like, beautiful artwork and lots of songs and um so yeah just through her and the radio too um 
I, I would probably say that a lot of my early music listening was just kind of like whatever was coming in from, you know, um, TV or movies or radio. But yeah, Smashing Pumpkins, I think from my sister kind of picking up on it. And it stuck with me for a bit. Yeah. yeah. So um, if I understand, like your sister was sort of like... Um, leaving leaving your your mother's musical nest for for other explorations and, and that sort of <laughs> talk maybe about um or not i i guess like uh my family probably like we we just like listened to like just like what was on the radio per yeah. se it wasn't um i mean my my parents had like a few CDs but um, my sister w did make like a statement at some point um, when she was probably in like fourth or fifth grade. Like um, we were at a yard sale and she bought like a bunch of Beatles tapes and was like, I'm buying these because you guys deprived me of music in my early childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I was just like kind of clueless. Like, uh, why are you so... <laughs> like she was... Um, so yeah, sh she definitely would... Um, go and seek music especially with the help of like napster and oh yeah um, yeah. yeah never heard of it <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah she would she would um and she and she liked listening to um whfs you oh, know yeah. and she 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 got me in a radio head too and uh fiona apple and some stuff like that so but yeah before that i was just kind of like listening to music as it came. So, yeah, I appreciate her for turning me on to some stuff. Yeah. And it it sounds like uh like, I don't know. My 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 family is sort of the same way. They're just picking up what's coming through. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily seeking it out and, and that's all right. Yeah. Totally. Um but uh but you still have music around you before you know before all of that before you start playing and things so uh you watched a lot of movie musicals with your grandmother yeah we would go to my nana's house um you know during summer or around holidays like uh easter or um i don't know christmas and she had a collection of musicals i remember watching like when we would go over there we would watch musicals um and yeah, it, the thing I liked about her house is that there was like time to do stuff like that, if that makes any sense. Like, just like I would like weave pot holders on a little <laughs> loom and like oh, watch nice. musical. Like, it was just like a place where you could like bake and like, yeah, it was like more kind of like this is this like warm and creative environment yeah. kind of thing. Like, so like a, like cozy a nana. chill time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she she just passed away two or three weeks ago after oh, ninety eight years. So. Um, oh, that's a good stretch. Though. Yeah, yeah, it was. So I I I do have fond memories of like watching stuff, but but in hindsight, like s some of those musicals, um, yeah, like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Bless your beautiful hide, wherever you may be. You're the bride for me. I watched that as an adult. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the women were sobbing. No. So, so, yeah. Some of it I just can't get down with. Yeah. They, they sang some cruel <laughs> stuff with smiles on their faces back. Yeah. Back <laughs> yeah. But musically, um, they, could be, they could be pretty interesting. Like, the sound of music has beautiful music going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Um, um. Definitely. Yeah. I remember falling asleep during Sound of Music. Yeah, me too. I don't it's know a if I, movie for a kid. <laughs> I don't know if I've watched the whole Sound of Music, but I also have a pattern of falling asleep during movies. So, but yeah, it's a it is a good musical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's I don't, I don't know uh, those those musicals just have like more expansive melodies than your regular pop song so mm -hmm. and, and i do kind of wish too we went more through life just sort of like singing about <laughs> what's going on in our day 
<laughs> it's like, how are you doing? Well, let me tell you. You know, like, <laughs> it'd be awesome. We would all be like laughing be the more, Do it. singing in the rain. Like, yeah. I've never actually seen that one. Oh. I know the chorus. It's good. Like, um, <laughs> that the, there's like a lot of good dancing and yeah. Or um, pff, Music Man, Mary and the Librarian. There's a yeah. song from. Okay, I, all right. I'm not going to try and think of it now, but there is a song from there that, that I like a lot, and I can't remember what it is. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, I did have, like, in middle school, a group of people sing Marion the Librarian to me, which um, <laughs> was a, a beautiful moment in my life. <laughs> <laughs> if you like books, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so... Um, so tell us about this annual guitar concert. This was in high school, right? Oh, yeah. You started writing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about... Mm -hmm. um, the annual guitar concert was a, a cool event that um, my friends and I always were excited to be a part of. I think the first year I did uh, Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins cover. <laughs> And then another year, my friends and I did, like, a Ramones and Misfits cover, and I was playing bass for that. Um, and uh, there was a year where my friend and I had, like, this big, ambitious vision of doing something, like, totally out there. And my friend and I would um, write a lot of stream-of-conscious poetry with each other, um, and we were like, oh, we're going to take this and, like, recite it and put some music to it and get dancers and projections. Of, that, that, that's, that other stuff didn't happen. But um, How'd you get into stream of consciousness poetry? I was just always kind of into writing poems. Um, You're just a cool kid like that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Claim it. <laughs> there were a lot of cool things that I was bad at as a kid, like basketball. <laughs> um, Really bad at that, but yeah, I I don't know. Um, poetry it just kind of like latched onto me at some point. Um, I was recently at my parents' house and I was trying to find um, a photo of my nana because she had she had just died, and I was going through a memory box and found like a book of my poems, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, and it was pretty cute reading like ten year old poems by me and I'm like hey I'm still trying to honor this aspect you know as a 30 31 year old now so yeah it's really into in, into it so my friend and I we would write back and forth together and we did that for many years yeah about like five or six years so. and and so you you played uh some some of the stuff that you did with her yeah for this concert we put together a piece I don't know if you would even call it a song, <laughs> but we we performed something, and I remember a lot of <laughs> there were a lot of what the hell expressions. <laughs> what are you doing? Because there was, you know, um, my other friends were like kicking it with like rage, like full on rage against the machine cover band, and like um, people it's people not do that it. far away. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was just like, I don't know, doing this weird fluffy just like poem and then like it b basically if you've ever heard one of my songs um I, I write in this very collage sort of stream of consciousness way um i i would hope that it seems somewhat mature in recent years but just imagine that as a 15 year old it was just like <laughs> awkward it's still sometimes awkward but it was like really awkward then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you had, <laughs> um, and you have, and you had many influences, but there was there was one particular on guitar, very talented musician. He did happen to put a bucket on his head when he when he <laughs> plays, and he call, he's called Bucket Head. Bucket Head. Bucket Head. Yeah. Tell us about um, it. Bucket Head was one of the many musicians that I was just like really into in high school. Um, you probably, if you know him, what? 
Yeah, he was. Pra- yeah, big Bernie's bucket of Colonel Claypool. Uh, Colonel Claypool's big bucket of Bernie brains. He was like, he collaborated with a lot of artists, but um, he's still like pr- prolifically like releasing albums. He's got like many, many. Albums. Yeah, he just. <laughs> what? All right, let's go see Buckethead next week. Check if, out if you Buckethead. Want the experience. Um, uh, well, you know, look in the calendar of events <laughs> first, but coop, you know, raising a cage. <laughs> Half alive, half Nothing's dead. Nothing's going on. Check out Buckethead. Posters calling Buckethead. Um, that was like a Claypool song. Um, but yeah, Buckethead um, was one of the many people, but I would say he did have a big impact on me at this one point. Um, he's known for like shredding and doing all this crazy guitar stunts. Um, but he also put out this like uh, chill album called Colma with like a lot of finger picking and it's like the softer side of him and someone shared it with me and I was like I want to be able to finger pick and I listened to it a lot and um, I recently checked it out again and it's a little cheesy <laughs> but um, I checked it out too it's <laughs> yeah. the production's cheesy but that's that's the 90s for you yeah but there's some People like might really say the same thing about what's happening now mm-hmm. later yeah, I mean, that happens with music. But, um, yeah, I, w- I would say, like, I was just, like, really attracted to, like, his, his like, riffs and finger-picking patterns. And, and I ended up seeing him perform a lot um, in different groups. So, yeah. Awesome. This is a song that actually has lyrics, but I wanted to do it instrumental tonight just to, like, f- focus on the guitar part. But um, as I just double check my tuning I, I will put in this note um right after i got into buckethead buckethead was coming to dc and my friends were going and my mom wouldn't let me go because it was a school night so i cried a lot <laughs> <laughs> but i did end up getting to see buckethead perform many times later <laughs> it's okay to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's the song. This song is called Alexander.
Yeah. That's great. That's wonderful, and that's called Alexander? Yeah, there's some, some lyrics for it, but um, after I wrote it, like when I was thinking about this stuff and these influences, there's definitely some like coma inspired riffs in that sure. song. Yeah. So, so, yeah. In your writing, you've got, you've got uh, a lot of movements. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's sort of like yeah. it's in one place, and here we go, we're going somewhere else. Now we're going to go somewhere else. Now we're going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like you're on tour. It's great. Yeah. yeah. You're on like a musical tour. Um, yeah. So uh, when you got to college, you were taking uh, you were taking classical guitar lessons with Larry? Larry Snitzler. S Snitzler. Snitzler, yeah. Um, who, who learned some stuff on guitar from Andres Segovia, which is this uh, legendary classical guitarist. So yeah. it's kind of cool that I got a little taste of guitar from someone who learned from him yeah that's pretty dope yeah, yeah. but What'd like uh, um college was not the greatest time for me i would say i i was like pretty sick and i had also injured my arm Ooh. i like fell on ice on my way to like my piano final <laughs> i slipped on ice and my arm flared up my teacher thought I was faking the pain and gave me an incomplete. <laughs> yeah, it was like a bad time. I was already getting like C's because I was so confused by theory and stuff. But um, I, can dig it. I would say that Larry was a very, uh, when, I, when I worked with him, um, he was very kind. The, well, I wanted to get a music major, so I auditioned for the music program. And... Um, I went in for my audition, and I was like, all right, I like kind of faked learning two pieces, and I don't really know how to learn, read music, but here I am. And um, I went in for my audition, and I played like two notes of my first piece, and Larry was like, stop. <laughs> Come back in six months. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Larry. And I went home and, you know, cried the same way I cried when I couldn't see Buckethead. <laughs> <laughs> But cried more because I'm like, God, this is what I want my future to be in you know? <laughs> six months. So I was like undecided for in college for a long time. I ended up getting an art major, a music minor. But um, with Larry, um, yeah, he he was just like kind of like, all right, you seem like you you're gonna do interesting things. I'm not sure <laughs> what they are. Um, uh, it's usually well, how it goes, Larry. <laughs> yeah, but he was like, he was like, let let's try to get you to learn this thing for your for what you need to do in this curriculum based environment. So he was very kind. Um, he he helped he helped me, and I I wish I could have been like at a point in my life where I'm like I'm sitting down with like this really awesome educated musician. Um, and I can fully absorb it, but I wasn't there in my life to do that. So, sounds like you got what you needed to me. Yeah, I guess <laughs> a um, little bit. Yeah. So we we may be jumping around a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but um, so so you you were seeing someone who um, you went to shows with a lot, and you saw a lot of music. Yeah. Um, uh, and this this person was a musician as well. I wonder if you could talk about. Yeah, um, I dated a guy in high school for a little bit um, who he played drums, and uh, he was just like one of his hobbies was to cruise around and find good music online and in stores. And he had he gave me my first record player. And he gave me some, you know, recommendations of music to check out. And we'd spend a lot of time, like, listening to music and going to shows. And his his mom was, a, like, had a side hustle as a ticket scalper. <laughs> so we'd, um, uh, yeah, so we would um, go to a lot of shows a lot. Um, yeah, it was cool. So um, it... it Sounds like you saw a whole lot of music. Mm -hmm. um, um, let's see. Uh, Primus 
is, yeah, is buck one head, from Buckethead. Yeah, head, <laughs> yeah. Um, Blue Man Group and uh, any any others that you can think of. I'm trying to think. Um, gosh, there's just so much shows I've seen since yeah. then and now. Um, yeah, I, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to go that back in time. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like you were discovering a lot of stuff with uh, mm -hmm. with him, along with him. Yeah. Um, uh, metal. Uh, there's some like deep, yeah. deep metal that you were getting into. Uh, Mastodon <laughs> and, and Baroness. Yeah, Baroness and uh, Neurosis. I don't know if he turned me on to Neurosis or not, but um, yeah, I did. In you know, in the guitar class, I. I had um, friends that were into like you know metal, um, so yeah, there was there was this one band that my boyfriend turned me on to called Dysrhythmia. Mm -hmm. um, they just like like kind of like prog metal, and then the guitarist of Dysrhythmia, I think his name is Kevin Huffnagel. Um, he has a lot. He's kind of like turned me on to finger picking the way like Buckethead did too. He has like his own solo stuff outside of the, like the prog metal of Dysrhythmia um, with like really great um, instrumental guitar. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's 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 other music you were checking out as well. You're starting to get into jazz with like Miles Davis oh, yeah. and stuff. Kind and then there's really also like King Crimson. Oh, yeah. More prog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love King Crimson. Um, still love them very much. I think like I was, you know, attracted to stuff like that, which um, you were mentioning earlier, earlier. How my songs kind of like go in places. Mm -hmm. um, I like that about bands like King Crimson or or even like Dysrhythmia. Um, just like hearing music that isn't just like verse, chorus, verse. Like it's like passages and the meter can change or not even really thinking of like structure when I'm listening to a song, but just like, you know, just like going on this like dynamic journey. Um, I, I like that. Like, um, like I think this Lark's Tongue and Aspic King Crimson um, album and song, uh, like you'll just hear these like really explosive parts and then they bring it back down with like this really like soft gentle strings and then it like goes somewhere else and yeah it's just like it's very stimulating yeah. Yeah. so mm -hmm. with with your boyfriend you were discovering a lot of really cool stuff and he had a group that uh that he was into uh and you weren't a part of it why was that? Oh yeah, that was just like a common thing of um me being a girl and guys doing the same thing but kind of being like you stay over there <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Yeah, like that was like not just him, it was like an ongoing pattern <laughs> of kind of like yeah, like we're doing our thing like uh I don't know. Yeah, it 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 sucked. It, it definitely, uh, I think, affected me of like not wanting to be in a band because um, I had a hard time trusting, like, so or or sort of the dynamic of like male female musician collab. I mean, the whole this whole week, Ryan Adams, <laughs> you know, like it's a lot of uh, musicians deal with. I mean, I've I've had the fortune of meeting great collaborators um, in recent years, but there's always like weird. S there there has been some weird dynamics with people from high school until now. You know, um, I don't know where I'm going, but um, well, yeah, yeah. They're just like be, just being a girl and being yeah. a musician. It can be weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even if they're like being like innocent, you know, like or um not trying to be mean. Like it was just kind of like that energy of like we're doing our thing, like don't touch that or like don't, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad yeah. that you kept doing your thing and Yeah. You continued to grow and expand in your own way. Um So mm -hmm. Eventually, your arm healed up, <laughs> and 
<laughs> crossing <laughs> my fingers. <laughs> yeah. And um, mm -hmm. you got back to to um, playing playing keyboard, and it sounds like you're getting into uh, playing uh, synthesizer a little bit. I wonder if you could talk to me about about how you're yeah how that's happening for you. The synthesizer was a big surprise. <laughs> there may be some people present tonight that helped make it come into my life. Um, my past birthday, my friend surprised me by chipping in and getting a synth for me. That's um, awesome. Which is a massive 180 from a classical guitar. Because with a classical guitar, you get your classical guitar tone. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Which is why I love it. It is what it is. Boy, the synthesizer. It is everything. <laughs> it is everything and anything. Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got um, some uh, some musical influences that with this synthesizer you're able to pursue a, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, Fever Ray is mm -hmm. is one. I you, if you could tell me about them. Yeah. Um, Fever Ray, uh, I don't remember anyone's name in the in the band Fever Ray, but they're also people in Fever Ray are in the knife, I think. Um, yeah, just like really great layered, textured, electronic, danceable music. Um, very very cool stuff, and I want to learn how to do um, a cover by the knife. Someday, it's like a goal of mine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, um, super super layered uh, synth stuff that mm -hmm. that has Bjork written all over it. Yeah, Bjork's uh, you know been a fan of her for a while too. Um, one thing I love about her, but besides like her amazing musicianship, is just having. Um, Seeing a musician that I've admired for a while, like, get older and still just crush it um, yeah. as a female, uh, because I haven't seen that enough. So um, I really love that about her. And she's also been very vocal about, like, you know, her involvement in what she does and, like, you know, saying, like, I produce this, but I'm like, I'm Bjork, and people are still saying some dude did it for me, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So, like, um, she and, and she's also just so poetic in the way that she writes, but also in the way that she carries herself. So, yeah. yeah. And does not care if someone calls her weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then that... Um, she's, she's happy to do different yeah. things. And she, she made that album, Biophilia, which was, uh, like kind of like nature environmental kind of themed album but like your latest album yeah yeah um so it, it, it's cool you know just like writing how like love is like a virus or or um <laughs> she like one of the lyrics i love from the album is like as fast as your fingernail grows and she's like talking about like that's the movement of tectonic plates like it's it's very nerdy <laughs> <laughs> lyrically and as a, a, a nerdy lyricist i love that so yeah. <laughs> i'm like yes <laughs> so that's all good nerd music well i wonder if you could play something on your brand new chord yeah i will i will play a song and it's actually called cosmos i'm just gonna play it as it is right now but i do imagine it would have like more of those layers and textures on a recording once that comes along. I also recently got my hands on a sampler hey. um, that my friends let me borrow. Um, my friend Mike, who helped orchestrate get, getting this synth. So maybe with a sampler I can oh make those realities happen. All right, so here we go. Um, Cosmos. Oh, yeah, and so I wrote this song kind of um, just a, a little tidbit of... So sometimes we want to be certain things and we don't end up doing that because we think we can't. But uh, this is just to, you know, if you hear the song, you'll notice like how we are connected. And like, for instance, I wanted to study birds, but I'm like, I can't go to school and study birds. But 
I still go outside and I like study them in my own experiences. You can still study so birds. yeah. Anyway, you'll you'll hear it. <laughs> Getting lost in the microcosms, like golden pollen and columns of moss, because the cosmos called, oh the cosmos called, oh the cosmos called, and he could not ignore when the cosmos beckoned for his attention. He set the intention to spend time outdoors. On a walk, he'd notice overflowing flocks, or a budding lotus that gave him the nod that he was interlocking more with the cosmos. That he was interlocking more with the cosmos. To be an astronaut, but she was taught to remain grounded in class. She found herself surrounded by four walls and a ceiling so tall and made out of glass. But the cosmos called, oh the cosmos called, oh the cosmos called, and she could not ignore. When the cosmos beckoned for her attention, she set the intention to spend time outdoors. Clear nights permitted a trip outside of the city limits, and she would stare for hours at the cosmos. She would stare for hours at the cosmos. To be an ornithologist, but someone convinced her to dismiss her dreams. Sadly, she listened. But later on, she was redeemed because the cosmos called. Oh, the cosmos called. Oh, the cosmos called, and she could not ignore when the cosmos beckoned for. She set the intention to spend time outdoors. A great blue heaven graced her sight, and it grew apparent how she just might be quite connected to the cosmos. Be quite connected to the cosmos. want to talk about Philip Glass sure and maybe some all other uh, places that you've gotten some minimalist ideas mm -hmm. yeah can you yeah talk um, about how Philip Glass is me? another musician that um, my high school boyfriend turned me on to I think he just had um, some tracks like from Einstein on the beach, which was like this big piece Philip Glass did, and um, yeah, I just love like uh, his uh, his use of like arpeggios in music, which as a finger finger picking guitar yeah. player, like I'm just ar arpeggios are very close to my heart. Arpe and arpeggios are yeah. are like uh, chords, which are wh where the notes of the chords are played yeah. one at a time. You know, like. rhythmic pattern to it 
um, the arpeggios, which goes to track to two with Philip Glass's music. And there's a lot of composers fr um, that were kind of surfacing around his time, like John Cage and uh, Terry Riley, Steve Reich, um, that I really love as well. Yeah. And so, so these folks are, are thinking a little bit differently a, about uh, about music and 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 space, mm -hmm. right? And, and what can be what can be music? Totally, uh, yeah. Like John Cage, um, who um, I got into John Cage when I was in college. Um, we had to write an essay about someone in culture. We had to pick a name from a hat, and I, I picked John Cage. That's a good name to pick. <laughs> and I was like, who's this guy? And, you know, my uh, classmates are picking, like, people we've all heard about. And I'm like, who's this? I know Nicholas Cage. You know, I don't know John <laughs> Cage. Um, so I went to the library. Um, that is one thing I did like about college when I went to college is that um, – the internet wasn't such a thing yet. Like, I didn't own a computer. Um, I mean, my, my parents had a computer, but I didn't have, like, a laptop or a smartphone. So I went to the library to do my research on John Cage, and I was, like, pulling um, videos and CDs and listening and, and, and text. Um, he's known for having some text. And I just remember being like, what is this? It's, like, very, very, was very weird. Um... But then I, it really grew on me. Like, yeah, um, um, his experiments with sound, and he was, he was very ph philosophical. Um, and he has like that whole story of like going into the anoetic chamber, which is like a space. Like he was very curious about like what is sound and what is not sound. You know, like the four minutes and thirty three seconds of silence piece. Um, but yeah, he has a story of going into this anoetic chamber, a room that's supposed to not have Which is sound. four minutes and 33 seconds of <laughs> of n no one intentionally playing music. Yeah, oh, that, that's like, oh, yeah, that, that's his piece. Like, right. yeah, the guy with the piano. But in, in another instance, he went to this um, room like that was supposed, like a soundproof room, and he heard like these two sounds... And he said to the engineer, like, why did I hear these two sounds? I'm trying to, like, find silence. And the engineer said something like, oh, well, that high-pitched sound is your nervous system in operation, and the low-pitched sound is your blood in circulation. So, like, that, that kind <laughs> of, like, philosophy and his, like, kind of tuning in to sound, um, like, really, like, just, like, hit me in a cool way. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so would you play something on the piano for us that mm -hmm. takes, sure. us, takes us in a cool philosophical? Sure. This is like more of like, um, it's a new song. I'm going to play a new song tonight. Yeah. Awesome. It's called Natural, Natural Bridge. Anybody could get like a, a little bit of reverb on my voice?
Like it? So yeah, that was. A yeah, I thought it was pretty Thanks. good. That was a debut. And there's um, gonna be another song that will be recorded. That you, you heard that one time in my basement. Um, that's yeah. gonna be paired with it. So nice. Yeah, look out for that later on. I guess for sure. Yeah. Natural Bridge. There is a natural bridge in Virginia. In Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. You've been? Yeah, yeah. That's a song about like. There's like an emotional connection. Sure. The natural bridge for me. Yeah. Yeah. So. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. I want to go sometime. It's beautiful. Southern Virginia. Very beautiful. Appalachia. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to throw out some, some names and, and uh, mm -hmm. we can talk a, a little bit about them. Cool. Um, so first, uh, Audrey Her Herrer, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I think it's Audrey. I just feel like more comfortable if I hold it. Um, Audrey Herr, I think is how Herr. you say it. She's a buddy of mine. Uh, she, I met her when she lived in Boston, and she's recently moved to LA. And she, so she's a wonderful composer. She plays, she plays harp. Harp, yeah, she yeah. sings, plays harp and electronics and does all this great manipulation. Um, it's really fascinating uh, catching her performance because it's um, this great sound, but she, she's just also like this mastermind with all this equipment around her. And a uh, great songwriter and lyricist. Sure. So, and yeah. gave you a harp, right? 
Yeah, a little. She's cool? uh, letting me borrow a little harpsichord, which some of you are. Uh, the the so the Morton Street Drawing Group is in the house. Hey guys, it's so good to see you all. Um, I I pose for them sometime while playing the little harpsichord um, while th while they paint or draw me. Um, but yeah. She gave me a harp to borrow. I've been borrowing it for a while, and I'm very happy to be a harp guardian. Yeah. Awesome. Harp yeah. guardian. It has brought That's a lot of joy to my life, and it's a cool instrument because it's, it's, you know, it's like a piano, but instead of the keys, it's just the strings. So um, it has a really pleasant sound. I can bust it out anywhere. Like I brought it camping with me. I brought it to schools. I've had two-year-olds play on it. I've had 70-year-olds play on it. Like... It's an instrument where I can just like give it to someone and be like, just do anything on it. You're going to enjoy it. Um, so to me, it's a real cool. It's interesting because harp is not really an accessible instrument because it's so expensive to get one. But it's such an accessible instrument to play. Yeah. And it is such like um, an ancient instrument, too. Like there's like, you know, harps or like. Very like a lot like like the Cora, for instance. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like string like multi multi stringed instruments that have been around for a while. Yeah. Awesome. So speaking of of harp, Alice Coltrane. Yeah. Yeah. Alice is um. Yeah, I I I want to know more about her. I know that there's she's kind of having this like resurgence um in recent years, but uh she's got that album like Journey into such a I'm not saying that last part right. Oh, Journey wow. into su such a right such a tonight. Yeah, did okay. Um, but yeah, it was just an album that I just put on, and I love the headspace that it puts me in. And I, I run a bunch of like shows at um, the spot Holy Underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's the kind of music that I would put on in between bands or to like warm up the space. Um, just because it, it it just feels like very like clearing, yeah. um, warm it up in like a very spiritual way. Yeah, yeah. and the, and it's been cool because I put it on a bunch and more people are coming up to me and being like, "Is this Alex Coltrane?" And I'm like, "Yes, I'm glad you like this record too." So, mm -hmm. cool, um, Joanna Newsom. Yeah, um, I love Joanna Newsom. She's a great harpist and a storyteller. Um, I, I do have a little bit of a hesitation of talking about her anymore, though, though, because when I first heard her, I was kind of like, wow, that's somebody doing what I'm doing, but they're, like, really doing it um, at this amazing level. Um, she, and, and she's been also, like, very, like, vocal about, like, nerding out on stuff like sy syllabic emphases <laughs> like with your, with your songwriting and um uh but yeah uh, I I don't really like talking about her because I've played too many shows where after a show someone's like oh do you ever listen to Joanna Newsom you're just like Joanna Newsom um I'm like yeah I'm a female storyteller arpeggiating stuff <laughs> and not writing verse chorus verse but yeah and then the Washington Post did an interview about me and asked me about my influences. And I told them about Buckethead and Dysrhythmia and Joanna Newsom, and they opened it with, um, in 2010, Marion saw Joanna Newsom, and it changed her life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, not again. So yeah. I love her, but I don't want Yeah, I just talked about her a lot. I said I didn't want it, but I did. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about a little bit yeah. you like her yeah, I love her. um it's not her fault um it's not your fault either uh ali farka Torre. yeah that's um similar to like with alice coltrane it um ali farka Torre and like um tumani diabate i hope i'm saying that right um and like um those are um, musicians that I really like to play when I just want to kind of get in a zone and like um, f like get kind of like lost in the patterns. There's like just such beautiful like patterns and phrasing in that music. And um, sometimes I teach uh, art classes to kids. And I was teaching guitar over the summer, and I would often put on Ali Farka Touré um, before the kids would come in, like kind of like the wel welcoming music for them because it just like. It's just like 
kind of they would walk in and be like, "Ooh, this sounds so good," you know. So, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you really like how music can take a group of people and and put them into a certain space. Yeah, um, definitely. Especially like I love like. I love how music is like grounding and atmospheric at the same time. Um, and I did hear Joanna Newsom one time talk about West. <laughs> now that now that I've said that, uh, buck ahead, buck ahead, buck ahead. Buck ahead. <laughs> um, now that I've said the Joanna Newsom thing. Um, that and and I said this grounding and atmospheric thing, things are clicking in my head. I remember her saying a quote one time talking about West African music with like the chora of um, certain patterns and the way like the timing of it. But when they like got to this certain part in like, I guess like however they were doing the pattern, it was like heaven and earth meeting each other. So anyway, music grounding and atmospheric. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it right Trying there. To some bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Sun Kill Moon? Yeah, I just got into Sun Kill Moon, and it's interesting because he's one of those artists that people are like, don't listen to him, he's a jerk. Did you hear what he said to that person? So it's kind of an interesting time to get into some musicians because you know people are like, oh, well, they um they were they did something bad or they abused someone. Like, should you listen to them or not? But um, Sun Kill Moon, I I recently got into him. I was just was so fascinated by his um, approach to storytelling. He has this album called Benji, which is um a, a, like he sings stuff about like his cousin dying in an aerosol yeah. explosion and um other just like stuff like that but it's just like it's so like um it's like you're just sitting it's it's like the way that you and I are sitting right now and we're having a conversation but he like does that with music Very and you're just like like uh, like he's like romanticizing like being middle aged and eating blue crab cakes, you know, like <laughs> like like the, like blue crab cakes is like one of his courses, just like blue crab cakes. Yeah, it's just like there's like he just like takes a lot of the just like mundane part of um his day and makes it cool. He has like a song on that album about like uh his dad's friend like mercy killing somebody. <laughs> like really crazy that's like not mundane but um yeah. there's but 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 then as far as you know well he mentions but the song is like about hanging out with this guy who like mercy killed his sick wife and the guy's on house arrest and he's just like observing like oh there's like baked beans in his kitchen oh by the way this guy mercy killed his wife <laughs> so it's like a lot of interesting juxtapositions and that makes it fascinating yeah as a as a listener Boy Genius. Oh yeah, Boy Genius is um a cool if you're not familiar with them, um it's like a trio of some really good songwriters of the moment. Lucy Dacus, who um uh she's like a, a friend of mine that I don't see anymore because she's like she's touring the world. I'm so happy for her. She's going to Australia next month for shows. Um yeah, Lucy Dacus, Julian Baker, and Phoebe Bridgers and um it's just cool seeing them like power up and do some amazing, like well crafted songs together. Uh, Radiohead. Yeah, they, they've been one of those like been with me for a while kind of thing. Um, seen them perform. <laughs> when I was in high school, my high school boyfriend's mom got us third row tickets to go see Radiohead, oh. and Hail to the Thief came out. And my boyfriend, I'm looking at the camera <laughs> in case he watches this. Um, he swapped them for tool tick. Uh, no, a perfect circle tickets at nine thirty club where it's general admission. Anyway. <laughs> 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 I was mad. <laughs> but I've seen them live a bunch and yeah. Amazing. Oh uh, yeah, Radiohead's so good. Uh Saint Vincent? Yeah, St. Vincent, also um, phenomenal musicianship, great guitarist and songwriter. Um, 
And yeah, I first heard of her because she was playing with Sufjan Stevens and I f saw them doing this sort of like very indie, quiet, introspective folk song performance. But then I saw her do St. Vincent and it was yeah. like really unleashed music and I was like um, just very performative and like, um, yeah, just like very stimulating and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great songwriting. Hell of a guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, so I have two questions I always ask every uh, guest on the Songster series. First question, uh, or ask. Talk about your ideas of tradition and originality. I love hearing this. Everybody's got something different to say. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not a very traditional person person I would say uh, like a, um yeah I, I I feel like just like when tradition pops in my head I immediately think of like you know um, holidays and American traditions that I'm kind of turned off to because I'm not really certain about their their origins or what have you or like why why we're doing that I'm more so interested in like creating traditions like with my friends that kind of vibe more with what I want to do and maybe that's like what I'm trying to do with music too because like I don't feel like I'm per se trying to like carry on any musical traditions except except for the tradition of like storytelling or or um holding space and creating space like I think like um gathering as a tradition is really important especially with music Sure. Um, what do you want your music to do? Um, well, the main reason I, I make music is to sort of, well, besides being curious and attracted to doing so, is just sort of like process what's going on in my head and around me. Um, and this recent album I made, like Akatink, it's like this really... It, immersive song cycle it's a, in, about environmental stuff um i would hope that at least with that album with my music that it would get people sort of like critically think about things that are going on in our world um that you know like it all this talk about climate change and the uncertainty of the future um, really puts me in what I call ecological anxiety, which is why I made the album. Um, so I would hope that people would sort of like critically analyze things like Amazon, or, um, the internet, um, land fragmentation from highways. Like these are all like material I explore on my song. But I also have so, um, aspects of my song exploring not just the concerns, but the joys of nature like going on a hike or um appreciating finding things so i hope people would i hope it also inspire people to get outside yeah yeah wonderful new album right here folks you should definitely check it out she's uh she's got um got for sale it's lake uh i am having Akatink. trouble pronouncing tonight it's okay. yeah lake akatink link lake akatink you did a a um a cranky that we have, uh, you may have heard, if you've ever been to Creative Alliance of Crankies. Uh, we have a cranky fest every year. And, um, and uh, you, you did a, a piece with, with Vanessa. Valeska. Valeska, excuse mm -hmm. me. Having trouble pronouncing tonight. That's all right. Um, uh, that was that sort of based on, on that lake, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the piece that we did w with Leska, I created music for her um, Cranky and Shadow Puppet performance, but it was um, about Herring Run. Okay, wrong Which one. is Sorry. in town. Yeah. But yeah, it was kind of like this joy and concern thing, like walking along Herring Run and seeing like, oh, is that a, is that a heron? Oh, no, that's like tangled up plastic and sort of like getting overwhelmed by that, um, but also appreciating the views and the connection, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, 
in that in that vein, I wonder if you could play one last song for us. Sure. Awesome. Hey, Grace and Highlands. Gotta just tune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will play this. Uh, this is a song called Grease and Highlands, and it's about um, going outside and just feeling the clarity of the outdoors. This goes out to the Moscats, <laughs> big fans of the song. All right. be patient until I reach the grace and highlands adjacent to the Appalachian Trail and as I'm climbing up that peak I will be silent I will not speak For there's plenty for my senses to unveil I'm looking for a remedy A gentle cleanse, serenity Something that is chaste And when I'm in nature I perceive its greatness and grace So I will take care of this place And I will leave no trace At Great Sun Highlands I'm just so grateful to be At the Great Sun Highlands Give it up for Marion McLaughlin, folks. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the Songster Series. Thank you, Marion, for yeah. being a part of it. Yeah. Awesome. Please, please check out her new album. You can, you can come up to her. And, tape. and the new tape. And the new tape. I can still play mine in my car. So I'm getting one. Yeah.